Good morning, everybody. Thank you for uh, joining us today. It's good to be with everybody. We're going to get things started with some worship. So, um, yeah, Holy Spirit, we just invite you into this place this morning. Let's worship.
Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever bring above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe.
seated. Will you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for Easter. 
We thank you for the, the beautiful day we enjoyed last weekend, the sun shining. We got to gather and praise your name in song and in message as a congregation. And then came Monday. And we just confess that uh, this has been a, a hard week in many ways, a difficult week in, in many different places. And, and some of it was here, uh, our church experienced water in the basement like so many uh, families, so many homes in the Davenport area. There were earthquakes in our country and in others across the sea in New York and Taiwan. And, and so many news reports of, of fighting and wars. And, and we remember, Jesus, when, when you were alive with your disciples, one night you said, in this world we will experience difficulty. And yet we, we probably didn't expect some of the things for this week to be as hard as they were. And so we come this morning just to say, God, will you help us? God, will you give us hope uh, for each day, uh, hope renewed for each challenge? And we come to this time where we're invited to, to praise your name, to, to worship together in spirit and truth, and sometimes we don't feel like it. We come to worship, and we're invited to open our hearts and to rejoice in the presence of God, and sometimes we come burdened down and weighed down with difficulties, with work, expectations, circumstances beyond our control. And yet Jesus promises to meet us in this time, that worship is one of those ways that we can meet God in the midst of, of very busy weeks and sometimes um, circumstances that just kind of gang up on us. And so we come to this moment, we come to this day, we come to this hour, and, and just ask God that, that you would help us to not give up, that you would help us to not stay discouraged if, if that's how we came. That we can um, truly feel your presence and be energized by your power. That part of the message of Easter is that, that as bad as it was, Easter still came. As dead as a cemetery is, you were able to bring new life even in the midst of, of the grave. And as we are just one week out, from that message, we come uh, just needing another word of encouragement and hope that today as we hear about Peter and, and a failing, that we might be encouraged when we fail, when we hear about Peter and his um, discouragement, that, that we might be encouraged when we're discouraged. We pray for Pastor Jay and the message that he has prepared. Give us ears to hear. Speak to us through uh, what he will share next. And we just ask you to fill him with your Holy Spirit, that you might have a word for the church as we um, prepare ourselves to receive it in these moments. And maybe you have a, a prayer that you want to offer to God, and, and we just have a moment of silence, and each person can think their prayers, I would invite you to do that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers and hear us as together in one voice we would join in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. morning. Today's message is from John 21, verse 3 through 19. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out on a boat. But that was night. They caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach. But the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord When Simon Peter heard that, it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish. For they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there, with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples, and he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to them, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend to my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said he had said this to him a third time. Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, When you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go everywhere you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This was one of the longest <laughs> passages. Thank Don for reading it. Good morning. I'm Pastor Jay. I'm uh, glad you are uh, here with us. Follow me. That was what Jesus said to Peter at the end of today's passage. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. That was what Jesus said to Peter and his friends in uh, in the Gospel of Matthew and Mark when Jesus called them for the first time. Now here, Jesus is repeating what he uh, said earlier to Peter. Not only this, but also Jesus repeated all the settings too. Peter was experiencing failure, right before uh, Jesus called him at first. So Jesus told him to cast net on the right side of the boat. And then Peter and his friends caught lots of fish, just like in today's story. 
Also, Jesus prepared fire and breakfast for his disciples. Jesus gave them bread and fish. Jesus made a setting just like the night Peter betrayed Jesus. Just, uh, just like the night Peter betrayed Jesus three times. As you all know, Jesus asked three times too, because Peter denied three times. This setting is very typical uh, literal setting for Hebrew literature. The beginning and the end use a similar setting. Uh, in terms of structure of the uh, writing, they made a kind of sandwich. They put the something important in the middle, and they use the same pattern from the, uh, at, at the beginning and at the end, too. And also, using a story to teach people is a typical method in their culture, uh, which Jesus used a lot. Now John is using Peter's story to teach people uh, in his writing, just like Jesus did. How do you see today's, today's story? Uh, we see there is a critical failure, betraying someone you trusted, you know, someone you followed, and someone you loved. This story tells some people's real stories, representing their pain, their anguish, their sadness, and hopelessness. That was not only Peter's story, but all of Jesus' followers' story. And in the big picture, this is the story of ourselves, and this is a story that we need to hear, too. That is a story Jesus told them about the love of God. In it, Jesus welcomed Peter and other disciples who were there again, showing God's ultimate love toward people who remained in failure and hopelessness. That was the third time Jesus showed, uh, showed up to his disciples. Even after seeing the resurrected Jesus two times, these disciples returned to their hometown, Galilee, and they decided to do fishing there. They still, you know, under the impact of Jesus' crucifixion and the absence, they became like lost sheep. They did not know what to do. So they just went back to their old life, fishing. The disciples could not catch any fish through the night, just like when they first met Jesus. And Jesus told them what to do. So they cast the net on the right side of the boat and they caught lots of fish. And they realized it was Jesus. Peter jumped out of the boat and came to meet Jesus. Through the miracle Jesus performed, they realized it is Jesus. It is the Jesus they loved. The disciples were surprised by Jesus' hospitality. They had been fishing all night, and it was early in the morning. So they spent their night on the boat. They must have been tired hungry and cold. Jesus prepared fire and bread and fish for them. Jesus once again performed a miracle for them and fed them. He wanted to encourage his disciples. He wanted to comfort his disciples. He wanted to strengthen them again. When I read today's scripture, the Elijah's story in the Old Testament came into my mind. You know, when Elijah asked for death and fell asleep under the tree, God prepared bread and water for him because he had to work for 40 days and 40 nights up to the mountain Horeb again. Even though Elijah failed to bring the Israelites back to worshiping God from worshiping idol, 
God came to Elijah and comforted him and gave him strength again. We experience many failures in real life, in our life. As we all know, overcoming or healing from our failure is hard. It takes a while to return to everyday life, and some people cannot return easily, and some just suffer from it. Many of them have PTSD. When people experience failure, they often withdraw themselves from their mission and from the public, and we know they need help. Jesus came to his disciples when they could not catch fish again. They had grown up as fishermen, but they could not catch fish when Jesus met them for the first time. Jesus called them to become fishers of men, but they could not catch any more of people. None of them were successful. They're not productive anymore. They may feel they are worthless. Suddenly, Jesus came to them again, just like he had in the past. Jesus appeared in the middle of their failures, and Jesus forgave them, and Jesus restored them, and Jesus gave them a mission again. In the past, Peter opposed Jesus' will a few times. So in today's story, Jesus rechecked Peter's heart. Do you love me? That was the only question Jesus asked Peter. Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time, Jesus said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. If you love me, feed my lambs, tend my sheep, and feed my sheep. Jesus did not ask for a reason why Peter betrayed Jesus on that night. It is because Jesus did not intend to scold him. Jesus may appear to you in the middle of your failures and ask you again the same question, do you love me? Jesus wanted to forgive Peter. Jesus wanted to restore Peter. Jesus wanted to send Peter again as fishers of men. That was Jesus' intention. The author of the book, Pastor Jeff and I used for this sermon series, mentioned a story. He asked people to write their sins and uh, failures on the sand where sea waves can come up and erase them. In his video, he showed the waves keep coming up to the shore. It was very, very powerful image that God's love and God's grace can erase whatever we have done. Our failures, our sins against God. And suddenly I got a thought that the waves doesn't stop coming. It keeps coming and coming again and again and again. It keeps coming and erases all things there. 
God's mercy, God's grace, God's forgiveness, God's love are coming toward us again and again without skipping not even a single time. It's just coming again and again toward us. We can experience abundance in Jesus Christ who rose from the dead. Like the waves at the seashore, God's grace keeps coming toward you. It has come to you in the past. It's coming to you today. And it will continue to come forever. Today, Jesus also asks us the same question. Do you love me? And then he would say, feed my sheep as he did to Peter. Whatever we do, our uh, loving relationship with God is our most important thing. In the Old Testament, it describes this relationship between God and human being as a loving relationship, like a husband and a wife. The question just asked is what we must ask ourselves too, whether we love Jesus or not. Am I loving Jesus? If you told Jesus you love him, you would hear, feed my sheep from Jesus. How do you feed the sheep, the people of God? How do you? You probably need to ask this question, what is our mission? And what is your mission? You may notice it by seeing how you use your talent, your time, your money, your energy, and all of your resources. Where do you use your talents and resources, your energy and your time? Are they connected to the ministry of Jesus Christ? Are they? They should be used to share the love of God shown through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. It should be connected to Jesus' ministry. Jesus came to Peter when he was in the desperate situation with his failure. I believe Jesus still does come whoever experiences Peter what Peter went through. Please remember the sea waves. It's keep coming. It never stops. God's grace, God's love toward you is keep coming until the end. Let us pray. Loving God, we are grateful for the reminder that resurrection leads to restoration, and restoration leads to mission. This is the power of Jesus' resurrection. Continue to lead us toward our own restoration moment so that we may move confidently and boldly into the mission you have for each of us. We desire to move forward with you in love. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Now it is for the communion. Uh, I'd like to invite Pastor Jeff to come up. On the night in which he gave up himself for us, he took bread gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of new covenant pour out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
When Jesus appeared to the disciples on that night again, he prepared a meal for his disciples. He broke the bread and gave to his disciples once again. Remember, God's grace is coming to you. The table is ready. All of you are welcome to Jesus' table. The communion service, please come forward. Let us all stand and praise the Lord. Fresh. 
Go from here as witnesses of what you have seen and heard. Share God's love with those who meet. Bring hope to those who are in despair. Live lives of gratitude and praise. And may the love of God, the peace of Jesus Christ, and the ongoing presence of the Holy Spirit be within you and among you until we meet again. Amen.